that it? Oh, he's one up on you. There, yeah. All right, that was fun. <laughs> Good morning from Bobblehead Homestead. I am Jeff. Today is Wednesday and it is not raining. In fact, the sun is even out here and there. So, I've got some projects to do. Yep. First up, I grab some of the tools I am gonna need today if I get around to everything. Uh, first I want to start off, I am putting these, uh, that hook latch thing on the chicken coop. So I think I got everything I need. Ah, watch out! Still got butterflies. Is that a monarch? I think that's a monarch. Doesn't have the line at the bottom of the tail. I'm learning. Oh. Where'd you go, dude? There he is. Okay, back to work. Next project. This nesting box has not been great. <laughs> and I knew it was just going to be a throw together temporary thing. Uh, yeah, I had two days from the time that I found the Welsomers on Facebook until I got them. I had two days uh, to, uh, to get prepared for nine new hens coming. So they are laying eggs in there, but they're laying eggs someplace else also. So I need to make some modifications. That front board isn't tall enough, all of the hay's coming out of there, and they're not using the two end uh, nest boxes. It's probably too short for them. So here's where we go. That didn't take too long or too much effort, so project number two, check. Now, before I put the nesting boxes in there, I use this opportunity. I uh, grab some more hay and put it in there, just in big clumps. They'll they'll uh, <laughs> uh, they'll put it where they want it to go. I'll just say that, and that just collects their their poop at night. And I pile it up for, well, about, I'd like to do it every four or five days, put a new layer on there. And then every, uh, well, it depends on how many uh, chickens there are, blah, blah, blah. But every, I don't know, two to three weeks, I will rake it out and start over again. And the stuff I rake out is uh, either goes directly on the garden or is composted. Oh, and while I'm doing that... It's also time to put some diatomaceous earth down. I have been finding eggs uh, back there. That's our little chicken fort. It's where number two and her four uh, chicks have been spending the night. Um, 
there's a little chair with a nesting box back there that they had been spending the night in and they still are. But now the Welsomers found it and have started laying a few eggs there. I find one there uh, most days. And I just got one. Can you see that? It's a nice, uh, nice speckled terracotta egg. Pretty cool. Not bad for some morning projects after I got my morning chores done. So good deal. Uh, end up, I didn't need the sawzall or the tape measure because I found a piece of wood that fit perfectly without me needing to measure it or cut it. And this sawzall, out in the country, sent me this, what, back in the spring? And I cannot tell you how much use I've gotten out of one of these. This thing is awesome because it's cordless. So I can, you know, I can take it wherever I want to go and do my 10, 15 minutes of work and, and you know, it's... Uh, it's just been so valuable. So if you're thinking about doing homesteading and stuff like I am, doing your cell projects, these things are great. Uh, yeah, it got so warm I had to take off my long sleeve shirt. It's probably over 60 again today. So woohoo! Uh, now it's time for lunch and a nap. What am I doing for lunch? Oh yeah, wild hog stew. <laughs> I've still got uh, two or three more, two and a half more of those little tub things. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to cook that up with uh, some pasta. And this isn't just any pasta. I mentioned it before, but it comes from uh, part-time permies. Well, they have a business, West Michigan Pasta and Provisions. Mike and Cindy, Mike is a, a chef. I'll leave a link to their website below. You can learn all about their pasta. It's, you know, it's not like that 99 cent stuff you get at the, at the grocery stores. This is some good stuff. And they sent it to me quite a while ago in just awesome packaging. Uh, so it, you know, it tastes no different now than the first, first uh, package I opened way back when. So yeah, and this is sounding like a commercial for them, but I don't care. They're good people. And they've, uh, they've got a good channel, and they've got a good website with a, you know, a home-based business that they're, that they're starting out and selling at farmer's markets. And, yeah, they're just good people. So if you like some artisan pasta, go, go give them a chance. Uh, Justin Rhodes stopped by their place during his Great American Farm Tour. They're up in western Michigan, Kalamazoo area. And I was actually thinking about living in that area at one time. But yeah, okay, enough about that. Time for lunch and a nap. How about a little flood update? That was, that's the low area where the water was collecting. That was dug out years ago to be a pond, kind of in that area with the carpet. And I still got some nice zinnias over there too. But yeah, about within 24 hours of the rain stopping, it was all soaked up. So it doesn't stick around. This is the second time I had that happen, so I'm, uh, I've learned where the water goes. Uh, it goes, you know, on the other side of this tree, you know, there's like a little lower depression in there. That's where the groundhog, uh, and I haven't seen it since it flooded, so maybe the flooding chased the groundhog off to a, to a different home. Probably still on my property, <laughs> just further back. Oh, that is the, oh, try not to make you dizzy. That's basically the southeastern uh, corner of my property there. The lane's on the other side of that tree. And then this low area, so this is where it's coming from. And in this area, it gets pretty wide as far as how much water there is. I mean, there was a good, well, you saw it, it was a swamp. Um, unfortunately, because the water runs down here, it's also littered with trash because... Okay, I'm walking towards the southern edge of my property, and that's where the water comes from. My property is like 464 uh, feet deep back there in that direction, and that's where the water comes from. It's back there that I would like to build a, a pond maybe someday, and then do swales that zigzag uh, down through here to capture all of the water. The back uh, 
the back edge of my property is, well, my property is lower than my neighbor's property, so that's where it comes from. And then on the northwestern corner, I've got a high point up there, and so it goes down the hill, and it all meets up, and then starts a little stream that comes through here. So that would be the best place for the pond, because that's where the water gathers first. Uh, you know, it might only take an inch of rain to fill up a pond back hit there as opposed to, you know, uh, where the pond was dug out here. It might take four inches of rain before the water gets all the way down to that low point. So, yeah, permaculture, you know, in the future, once I get back there and start doing stuff, uh, yeah, it'd be nice to dig a little pond and then some swales that zigzag that collect the water and put some fruit trees and berries and and permaculture type stuff on the swales and you know maybe even use some of this downed old wood <laughs> you know that can be a, a, a hugel culture swale back there uh, you know use what you got so okay yeah that's an update on the flooding oh and of course Fifi has to follow me don't you yeah I bet Bob would be out here too, but it's his day inside. Grumpy's outside today. He hung around for about 10 minutes and then took off in the woods. So that's an improvement. Usually he heads straight for the woods, but today he hung out for about 10 minutes. So, Right, Fifi? Do you know where Grumpy's at? You don't know where he's at, do you? You probably don't care where he's at either. While I'm out here, I want to point out I've got these popping up. And this is in the area where the um, where the bulldozer came. This is uh, you know where that old shed house thing was. And there were some daffodils that were planted on the back side of that old shed house thing. So I think that's what those are. And there's a bunch of them popping up around here. There's a nice big. Uh, oh, let's go take a look at this one. There's a nice big patch of them right here. So, I'm going to have to dig them up, but that one you can see the bulb at the bottom. So I don't know if those are daffodils or what, but, and I'm not, well, uh, yeah, well, let's go walk over there. Somewhere in this area is where I want to move all the irises and daffodils and gladiolas and uh, lilies and all that stuff, but, uh, it's been raining so much, hasn't been able to get back in there with the bulldozer. So, yeah, it's kind of cool having a bulldozer sitting on your place for a few days. Anyway, so he's got to finish up that before I start uh, transplanting all of those bulb-type uh, perennial flower deals. Uh, not exactly sure where I will put them, because I also want to put the chickens over here next. So, um, but I, uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know. I take it as it comes, but yeah, this is where I want to move all those those daffodils and stuff. But I've been having to wait for this uh, this project to be finished. No hurry. That is an old tire rim that was out here, and yeah, that works great as a stand for the for the water. It keeps it up off the ground, and so they don't get it get it dirty quite so fast. So yeah, that thing's been working great. I've got another one around here somewhere. I need to start using that one too. Rye Wildberry. How you doing today? You've been crowing an awful lot. I think that means you're happy, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, you guys got some, uh, you guys got a little salad. The neighbors uh, stopped by with some, with some leftovers for you. We always appreciate that. Four more eggs this afternoon, three from my white and true blue, so I got one from three out of the four of them. And then the bottom right is, that's from Vicki Lawrence. She was the neighbor's hen, no clue what breed she is, but she's laying up a storm. I'm, I'm enjoying that. Hers are like a light brown, and they're more rounded than the white and true blues. And the white and true blues, I would... That one's an extra large, and then the other ones are probably larges, and they, you know, they keep pumping them out, so I am, yeah, and we're getting cock-a-doodle-dude in the background. Yeah, I'm happy with the ladies. I got a, 
I gotta start eating more eggs and give them more away until I start hatching them, that is. I've been getting a few suggestions about uh, using the mobile home pieces to uh, build a uh, tiny cabin for myself. Which, yeah, it isn't a, isn't a bad idea. Uh, there are resources in there and, you know, brainstorming, that's, uh, that's uh, not such a bad idea. There, there are a few good reasons why, um, why that won't work for me. And as soon as this car goes by, I'll tell you about that. This is where I'm thinking of putting the tiny cabin. Right at that white thing is the water well. So right there in front of the water well, hopefully between that tree, if not that tree can come down. But right in here, uh, you know, something 10 by 20, 12 by 24 in that size range. And then the water well will be on the back of the, uh, the cabin. And so I'd get rid of that housing that's on it now and uh, do, you know, just like a lean-to shed thing on the back of the cabin to house the water well. I could also put the water heater in there. That's one thing I can salvage out of the mobile home, it's a water heater, uh, assuming it's still working at that point. And I could put a water filter in there and so stuff like that. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm thinking of putting the tiny cabin is right in front of the water well, right where that old cabin shed thing was. And, um, and you know what, those things, if you get them small enough, they are easily moved. And there are companies out there with the proper equipment that can do that. But back to why uh, tearing up the mobile home is not, not the best idea for me. So the idea being that I could, you know, rip down the walls and use the lumber from the walls uh, and uh, flooring, roof, blah, 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 to just to build the tidying cabin. One problem with that is I'm still using the mobile home and I'm still living in there. <laughs> So there are basically only two inner walls, one on each side to, for the bedrooms. And so there's not a lot in those inner walls uh, that could be salvaged out of there to use. And I'm, you know, I need my front bedroom. I, I need to live in there. <laughs> so I can't tear apart, you know, my living space in order to get a few boards. Um, so there's just not enough boards on the inner walls to make it worth it. That means if I were to really try to use all the wood out of there, I'm having to tear down the outer walls and that compromises the roof. So, you know, the roof would have to come down in sections and, you know, it's just, uh, I could do that after I've got a cabin and after I've got more storage uh, available to me, but I have to use the mobile home <laughs> while I'm building the tiny cabin. It's, uh, you know, one or the other, not both at the same time. Um, so yeah, and I plan on using the, uh, I'm using it to live in, I'm using it for storage, dry storage, it's not bug free or uh, temperature, humidity controlled storage, but it is storage nonetheless, so, you know, if I start ripping the outer walls down, uh, you know, I've, I gotta come up with some other place for storage. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that, it's going to be a lot easier to give this away and have somebody haul it off the property if it's, you know, basically in the shape that it's in now. If I start ripping the outer walls and, and the roof down, it's going to be a lot fewer people who would be willing to, uh, to come and haul it out of here. I've already, I already know somebody who will, who will take it off my hands uh you know once i'm done with it but i'm not going to be done with it for a while i got to build a tiny cabin then i'm going to need more storage uh for myself and stuff like that and i'm still using that i want to use it over the winter to uh start seeds and doors and so it's just not the best idea for me to rip apart that mobile home uh you know right now if i left it pretty much intact the way it is somebody else who wants it for storage well they'll just haul it out of here and that's you know that's a lot less work for me <laughs> because if I start tearing it apart, you know, somebody who, uh, you know, they're not going to want it. There's not going to be as many people who want it to either, you know, fix it up themselves or for them to use it as storage. Uh, so then I would have to be, uh, you know, it would be a ton more work to get that thing out of here piece by piece myself 
than to give it away how it is and have somebody haul it out of here. So it's just, uh, you know, it, it's a good idea to use the resources you've got, but in this case it would make, uh, it would make things a lot more difficult uh, than it would save for some 2x4s. Can't use the flooring. Uh, might be able to use a little bit of electricity is all shot, plumbing's all shot. So really what I can use out of there is the water heater, uh, maybe the garden tub that's in the back uh, bathroom may be able to salvage that and use it in a tiny cabin. But other than that, there's just really not much in there uh, that would be useful for me, that would save me a lot of money. You know, the lumber, uh, that'd be a few hundred bucks and that's about it so it's really not worth all that effort losing my storage space losing my space to raise baby chicks losing my space to start seeds and losing my living space in order to save a few hundred bucks on a on a tiny cabin so yep that's my story and i'm sticking to it uh i just got interrupted <laughs> neighbor goes by Something cool is going to happen tomorrow. I really do believe that I didn't think would ever happen here. And you'll just have to stay tuned to my next video and see if it happens. If it doesn't happen, I'll tell you what it was. But I think it's going to happen. And it's going to be pretty cool. Okay, everybody. Uh, take her easy. Thanks for sticking with me. And I'm back in action. There's so much stuff coming up. Uh, so stay tuned. Yeah, we're getting a good pet session in, huh? Yeah. I don't even... You probably can't hear him purr. He's purring up a storm right now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grumpy's doing fine. But I only get to see him after dark when you come in and, and let me pet you for a little while on my bed. Yeah.